Well, there's only one of them in our sector, but she's a faster, more manoeuvrable machine, and she does have one rather deadly advantage. She can fire forward through the propeller arc. Yes, they have told us about the new German monoplane at our reserve squadron back in England. Mm. Well, his favourite trick's to come underneath you. Uh, using a blind spot, mostly when your observer's fully occupied. Ranging for the artillery. Absolutely. So it's up to you to keep your eyes skinned. Sounds jolly exciting. I can't wait for my first trip over the lines. Well, Captain Triggers does think you need a little more flying time. I was the best pupil on my course at Reserve Squadron. Well, yeah, all the same, I met this Hum monoplane on a couple of occasions. I'm not anxious to meet the chap again. So I dropped him a nip, told him my mother doesn't approve. Mr. Gillian? Sir. Damned Hun Archie Simmons has copped it now, just blew him out of the sky. Now, why the hell haven't we got his position so the batteries can plaster him? Well, we have got his position, sir. Sergeant Mills has a map reference. Yes, I've just seen it. According to Simmons' observer, it was a mile or so west of that. Oh, well, then they must have moved it, sir. Brilliant. No, what I meant, sir, was that it must be a mobile gun. Then, for God's sake, go out now, get an accurate map reference, and range number two battery onto it. Well, I haven't actually got an observer at the moment, so we ran into the Hump Patrol this morning, and my observer... Then get his position at least! You can do that much on your own, can't you? Yes, sir. Core HQ want a, a detailed map of the Hun's second-line trenches. Oh, God. So we don't want that Archie banging away at us while we're dawdling up and down with our faces buried in cameras. He's too damn accurate by half. You're Sea Flight's new man, are you? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you hadn't been introduced. Uh, this is our squadron commander, Major McAdam, Julian Cornblow. I'm very glad to meet you, sir. We can certainly do with you at the moment. Well, Captain Triggers does think he needs a little more flying time, sir, before going over the enemy lines. Any time will do, of course, for that map reference. Uh, Mr. Galian. Sir. Don't have engine trouble, will you? We're, um... We're four pilots and seven observers under strength. I want to start made on that Hun second line trench. So I'll find you an observer. Number two hangar, five minutes. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sergeant? HQ on the telephone for you, sir. What do Corps want now? Well, it's not Corps HQ, sir. It's the new general. Sergeant? Major McAdam, sir. Good morning. Well, yes, I suppose it is afternoon. I... Yes, sir. Yes, I see. Uh, will you be staying to lunch? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know, sir. I'll find out. Well, we, we look forward to your arrival. Where's Captain Triggers? On the long reconnaissance, sir.
Well, Cutting, what aren't you fired? The one you located yesterday, sir. Apparently it's been moved, so Mr. Galian's getting the new location. I see. He's giving himself flying orders now, sir. No, sir. The squadron commander is. Yes. Where are you going? I'm photographing second line hunt trenches with an observer from A flight. Oh, you know, Sergeant Mills, take a walk round the hangar, please. Now look, Cornblow, I know you're keen. I'm glad you're keen, but you're not ready. Whatever that means, nowadays. Just short of our lines, you'll have a spot of engine trouble. Do you understand? You'll turn around and come back. But isn't it rather important, sir, that we photograph these Oh, lines? yes, it's terribly important. <coughs> Means they're planning another push, an attack. General staff are getting bored again, not losing enough men. But the squadron commander... The Hun's said... second line trenches will still be here tomorrow. And with a spot of engine trouble, so will you. That's all. Yes, sir. Gun. I told him to turn back. Serves him damn well right then, doesn't it? So I don't usually like complaining, sir, but... Yes? The squadron commander, he seems to think that I'm the sort of chap... Well, good Lord, we have quite enough engine trouble without inventing it. Time to bath? Drowning your sorrows? I had a terrible bath. If it's about that new chap, Cornblow, I already know the details. Sit down and have a drink. As commander of sea You like to I... give your pilots their flying orders yourself? Yes. 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 Yes, I like everything nice and tidy too, but with all the holes in our flying boards, we just have to do our ragged best, and you all have to lump it. Now, for God's sake, sit down. HQ and their damned photographs. Have explained how it is. Squadron decimated by this new German monoplane designed by a Dutchman, if you're interested. General staff doesn't understand or doesn't want to. Almost hear them saying, ho, ho, ho. A small corner of the war has touched the RFC at last, as it were. Well. Slaughter in the trenches. What the hell's four pilots and seven observers? Five pilots. It was a direct hit. Nothing to do with experience or inexperience. Could happen to any one of us. A sobering thought for those of us who think we have a better chance of surviving just because we have a few more flying hours to our credit. Your chances are very good, I hear. You mean the new order forbidding squadron commanders to fly? Envious? Perhaps you'd like me to recommend you for a squadron of your own, and then you'll be nice and safe, too. What do you have? Randy, please. 
Two brandies, please. Mr. Galian, get the position of that Hun Archie. Yes, he did. You accused him of engine failure. Sensitive, isn't he? He's also very brave. Nevertheless, we're all sitting ducks with a ruffled set of feathers, boiling to fight back and not having the means to. Well, sooner or later, one or two of us might start inventing convenient mechanical troubles. It's easy enough, isn't it? What are we going to do about it? Grin and bear it, or wallow in drink. I don't believe in either. Keep the whip cracking, that's my... Opinion. I meant about the Han monoplane, sir. The only chance we have with a BE-2 is a mid-air collision. Anyway, there it is. They want a detailed map of the Hun second line trenches. That means every available man for the next few days. Long reconnaissance. You've been flying that, of course. Yes. Much to everybody else's relief, I'm sure. Deep into enemy territory, the Hun monoplane's easiest meet. I shall fly the long reconnaissance myself until the job's finished. Then you order forbidding squadron commanders to fly. Very likely in the envelope on my desk. I haven't opened it yet. I wanted to talk to you about the general's visit on Thursday. What general? General officer commanding the flying corps. That's right. His airworthy holiness himself. Why is he coming to St. Marie? Probably wants to see what an aeroplane looks like. <laughs> yes. He has a mania for supply. He goes around counting everything. Well, let's hope we start with the pilots and observers. When, when's Sergeant Farmer due back from leave? Thursday, why? And the general asked the same question, that's all. Oh! It's not fair. You couldn't have counted at 50. Yeah, so he did. Then you must have looked. No, I didn't. Then how did you know where I was? Your leave is almost over. Just one more day left. Hey, my turn now. Come on. No. I might not be able to find you. Well then. You'll always be able to find me. But you go back to France the day after tomorrow. Always. Wherever I am, I'll always be here with you. Now, my turn. <laughs> no, no more hiding. Uh, not me. It. It? You have to find it. Why not for you? Come on, I'll show you. What do you mean, not here? I'm a man who's always thought of himself as living his life alone. I could be thinking of changing my mind about that. I could be. But it's not possible. You understand that? Yes, I understand. My brother's widow. I can't ask you. The law won't allow it. So I thought it were best for both of us. There's a new shell factory opened up the other side of Burley Wood. Yes. Turned the place into Bedlam, they say. Pretty little village, Burley. No, it's just one big lodging house. Five and six men sleeping in a room together. Employing men like me, men with a disability. But I think the time's coming when we'll be directed. Already using that word in the papers. Me, I just as soon go of my own accord. When are you think you're going? Well, I've seen the manager. Lodging's all settled. Oh. Start next week. A new life. I'm doing a job for Alan. There. Off you go. Well, what is it? Oh, I didn't find it. 
how can I if I don't know what it is? Oh, well, you know when you find it, won't you? You're a fool sometimes, Alan Farmer. I might be sorry you said that, girl. Go on, open your eyes, seek and ye shall find. This is silly. Maybe, maybe not. I can't go rummaging about in your mother's kitchen. You don't need to rummage, just use your eyes. Get warmer. It's not. Go on then, open it. But I don't understand. We were going to Caxton tomorrow to buy it. Well, I went this morning on my motorbike instead, didn't Why? I? Open it. Oh, no, they must have put the wrong one in the box. Oh, but it costs a fortune. It's the one you really like to Yeah, but we settled on the other one. Where did you get the money? You're old still, I can't put it on. It's beautiful. So are you. Thank you, Alan. Where did you get the money? Yeah, we're not married yet, you know. Oh, but I still like to know. I made a sale. Sale? Sale of what? Well, it's not being used me over there in France. Just sitting out there in the paint shed. Not your motorcycle. Charlie Deacon's always had his eye on it anyway. You now he's having to go into Caxton every day to the munitions factory. Well. Wow. Anyway, it's much nicer than the other one. Oh, I wish I'd never said that. You saved for years to buy your motorcycle. Glad I did now. Anyway, I knew I should never ride it again. Never ride it again? Why? Well, there's two of us now. Married on my next leave. When the war ends, we shall have a motor. Why so quiet? Just can't believe it. Well, the ring's on your finger and Charlie Deacon's collecting the motorbike, so there. Just wait till my mother sees it. Yeah, remember to take it off when you're milking. Don't want it falling in someone's cup of tea, do we? <laughs> Here we are, then. A bit caught on the back side, but oh, I thought you could put a piece of blanket on top of it or something. What is it? Well, Alan was telling us about this new German monoplane, what attacks from behind and beneath. So I says to Alan, if it were me, I'd take a deal of comfort and a bit of cold steel. <laughs> it's a bulletproof seat. Bound to a pint, that'll stop a few bullets. Stein reporting for duty. Yes, I was expecting you. How do you find the Eindecker? I like her very much. She's fast and turns well. Come. I'll show you our method of attack. Wow. What are those? My three kills. We don't attack from above, but from beneath. Like this.
should be back by now. What's that? What the devil's that, Mills? Well, one of our lads has been pinching Monsieur Flemard's pair, sir, so I suppose... <laughs> I asked the culprit to leave them in my tent and I'd see they were returned. Well, I thought if Monsieur Flemard kicked up a fuss whilst the general Monsieur Flemard, his countrymen being killed and maimed a few miles from here. He's concerned about a few pounds of pears. Summary, C flight. Excuse me, sir. I've just received a message from B flight about the squadron commander. He's been shot down just inside our lines. Is he dead? I'm afraid, sir. Confirmed? Yes. What on, sir? Mr. Galeon. Sir, thank you. The general's on his way, sir. He'll be here in about 45 minutes. I hope to be back in time. General, if I'm not, you look after him until I get back. Me, sir? Yes, you, sir. I can get you promoted for nothing, you know. General knows all about you. Matter of fact, he knows far too much about all this. But if you're not here, sir, why should I tell the general? Squadron commander had a thought for dealing with a hard monoplane. I don't think for a moment it's going to work. But I have to pay him the respect of trying it. Quantity of assorted split bins. Yeah. Now, what have we got so far, Major? Two replacement windscreens, three gallons of red paint, 30 foot of half inch cable, one rear axle for RFC tender, two spare propellers for BE 2s, clips for elevators. How did the old rear axle get broken? Yes, well, um, they're pretty strong things, aren't they? Mm. How about old rear axle broken whilst tender driving over the road full of crumb? Sir, that sounds absolutely splendid. Do the trick, I think. I do like to have all the necessary and correct information. I have these notes typed up the moment I get back to HQ and send round to the appropriate staff officers. They can ask awkward questions. Indeed, they can, sir. I like to have all the answers. I'm still a new boy, you know. Go on, Major. Uh, clips for elevators and the quantity of a... You kindly, excuse me, sir, one of our machines. Devil. 
world is that lunatic. Good God. What's the man's name? Captain Trigger, sir. Our flight commander. Split pins and things. Does he know about the commander? Oh, yes, I told him. A shame, he's a. Did he know? Well, sir, what happened to you? Hun bullet. Severed my control. Oh, wow. It's another Hun pilot, by the way. Oh, God, so we're facing two of them now. And fine pilots, both of them. Not just a case of superior machinery. Well, don't just stand there. The fight officer's next on the general's list. You better start counting your paper fasteners. What? what? Paper fasteners? You're bound to be asked. Captain Triggers? Major Lansing, you know about your hangar roof, I take it? I know it has a roof, yes. There are two holes in it, one's at least two feet across. Oh, dear. I shall send you down some canvas for their repair. Thank you very much. Hate to think of our precious B-2s getting wet. Sergeant Mills, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is there anything you require, Sergeant? Not at the moment, thank you, sir. Office work in sea flight is minimal. It's mainly confined to writing to bereaved relatives. Thank you, Sergeant. You can excuse me now, sir. I gather you have a poor opinion of the general staff. You have your problems, I'm aware of that. Pressure of work can be rather overwhelming at times, but mostly it's a strong sense of guilt you feel when you read the casualty lists. Two saucepans for the officer's mess. Sir. And one large <coughs> frying pan for the sergeant's. Uh, Captain Trigger, sir. We have to buy cloth for the landing tees before the shop shut. Oh, yes, most urgent, those. And I should remind you that we're due in Paris at 8 o'clock this evening. Oh, the Paris Aviation Office. Thank God for your friends. And we have to collect those induction pipes for the Lerone engine. Oh, dear me, yes. There are times when I feel more like a commercial traveller than a general. So, you've got a second Eindecker in your sector, eh? Eindecker, sir? A new German monoplane that's slaughtering us, designed by a Dutchman. Fokker. Eindecker is German for monoplane. Oh, well, if we've no answer to them, at least we've a name for them. Hmm. Well, let's get down to business. You explain, Major. I shall go all round the mulberry bush. Despite your reluctance to write memoranda, Captain Triggers, we have a rather fat file on your sea flight up at HQ. You were the first to report the use of the forward-firing gun in this sector. It was a member of your flight that shot down one of these Eindeckers. Lieutenant Conrad, sir, it was unconfirmed. The Hun machine was shot down on the German side of the line. Nevertheless, a rather splendid achievement. Lieutenant Conrad is a remarkable shot. Unfortunately, he was killed on that engagement. The pilot of that machine was Sergeant Farmer. Yes, I know that. You've another excellent pilot in Lieutenant Galeon. We won't embarrass you with your own proficiency, Captain. Get on with it, Major. As you may know, Captain, despite the threat of these new monoplanes, the Flying Corps is to persist in its policy of reconnaissance. We're to go on being shot down one by one till there are none of us left. I don't like it any more than you do. But new brooms sometimes have to sweep the same old way. I have to do what I'm told as well, you know. However, Major? As our reconnaissance machines are now forced to fly in numbers for mutual protection, we're transferring A and B flights from St. Marie to other squadrons that have suffered heavy losses to make up the numbers. And C flight? I'll remain here and make a start on my own policy of forward action. What's forward action, sir? Our machines are built for reconnaissance. That's the brief I've been given. The purpose of these Eindeckers is to prevent me carrying out that brief. So there's only one thing left to do. Attack them. Attack them? With what? BE-2. I know it's a tall order. This is not just a tall order, sir. It's impossible. Of course it is. That's exactly why I've chosen you for the task. I do my homework meticulously, Captain Triggers, and I've come to the conclusion that you and the impossible go hand in hand. I'm aware that the odds are heavily against us. But if we wait until we've got machines capable of attacking these Eindeckers, we'll have no men left alive to fly them. We must begin right now to carry the war in the air to the Hun. So, you and your sea flight will harass these Eindeckers, give them no respite, keep them fully occupied, and so distract them from their intention of shooting down our reconnaissance machines. Understood? Sir. We really should be going, sir. All the shops will be shut. Yes, indeed. Well, good luck to you, Captain. Thank you, sir. Your main task will be keeping the Eindeckers occupied, but from time to time we may instruct you to perform certain other duties. Of the forward action nature, of course. Goodbye, Captain. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Oh, 
I shan't forget that canvas for the hangar roof. Oh, thank you. Bless their hearts. They've gone, sir. Shame they couldn't have stayed to dinner, really. They came to tell me that at last we're going to do some fighting in this war. We are? The days of reconnaissance are over. We're getting rid of the observers, of course. Getting rid of the observers, sir? Sergeant Mills, you and I are going to Paris. When, sir? Right away. What for, sir? To partake of a little of what the French are famous for. Looking for something? Hello, Charles. <laughs> Hello, Ellen. Well, enjoy your leave? Yes, thank you. Oh, I heard about your promotion. Oh. Congratulations. Thanks. Well, did you see my sister? Oh, no, I never made it up to London, actually. Uh, I changed her mind, eh? And no, Kate changed it for me. Ah. Uh -huh. You did warn me. <laughs> so, how's the old milkmaid, then? Well, she sent you some chocolate. Well, that's jolly decent, isn't it? I'm more engaged to be married. Well, congratulations. When's the awful day? Oh, next leave or when the war ends? Some hopes. It's going to go on for a couple of years. Well, at least we'll be doing something to help win it, eh? I'm not so sure this new relevant. I've been thinking about a new mountain for the Lewis, actually. I wonder if I ask Captain Triggers. Yes, yeah, so he's not here at the moment. He's gone off to Paris. Oh, no, thanks. What for? God knows. All a bit of a mystery. Anyway, about this mountain, I thought... You're a bit damned eager, aren't you? Sorry, I just got back from leave. Yes. I understand how it's been for the rest of you. Still, you're next on the list, aren't you, eh? Oh, I was. Now they've cancelled all leave. Marvellous, isn't it? Oh, no. Only one thing left to do, then. Shoot down them Hun monoplanes as quick as we can, then we can all go home, eh? Someone I want to ask you. Well, yes? What is it? Well, Lorna sent you some chocolate. My mother sent you some shaving soap. I said it'd be like bribery. <laughs> bribery? What the devil are you talking about? Well, they thought. Well, I thought I'd like you to be my best man. My dear fellow, I'd be absolutely delighted. Richard! Hey! What's all this about you slipping off without saying goodbye? Well, said all we had to say last night, didn't we? <laughs> Afraid we might see the tears in your eyes, eh? <laughs> tears of relief, I can tell you. I'm glad you don't want to observe us anymore. Forward action, a, a suicide, more like. Yes, yeah, well, you're right, of course. <laughs> Talk about poor little moths fluttering in the flames of fate, hmm? <sighs> right, good luck, Richard. And you, Charles. Well, this fitted to my machine. Well, we're not equipped, sir. This is a depot job. I know. That's why I'm giving you till tomorrow afternoon to get it done. Packed and ready to leave, are we? Yes, sir. A night in Gay Paris. For taking of a little of what the French are famous for. A blinking aero engine. Then you better unpack. They're not just a human sacrifice to the Eindecker, they want us for other jobs as well. So I need one observer. I'd hope for a good one. I'd just settle for you. is absolutely right in track for a more powerful engine. I mean, if we can match those iron deckers in speed... Well, you've got to, or you're in trouble. I can see that. But the new engine, it won't make her more manoeuvrable, will it? Honestly, why not? Here, Alan, will this new engine make her more manoeuvrable? We'll find that out when I test her, won't we? We're going to test her, eh? Well, I've helped to fit the new engine, sir. 
I understand her a bit better than your Captain Trigger, so it's only common sense that I should test her, isn't it? Morning. When would she be ready for testing? In about half an hour, sir. Good. Uh, we've been discussing the business of the new engine, sir, and... Oh, yes. Well, Corporal Harris here and the riggers, they say that the structure won't take the strain of the increase in speed. Hmm. Well, they, they say it'll pull the wings off. Certain of that, are they? Uh, well, no, sir. And no. that's what we're testing her for, isn't it? I'd like to volunteer for the job, sir. Oh, I think it goes without saying that I should test her, sir. Oh, you do? Yes, sir. She'll put it through everything we know, then finish off with a long, steep dive with the engine full on. I'd recommend that, would you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. The wings are going to pull off, that's when it'll happen, sir. Very oh, well, and that's what I shall do. Tell me when she's ready. You know, if there's one thing I absolutely hate, it's watching other flyers fly. I'm off a little nap. Yes, me too. Wake me up when he lands. You two couldn't bear to watch. I couldn't sleep. I tried counting sheep, but they went too fast and their ears pulled off. Has he done the dive with the engine full on yet? No, after these tight turns. find a new mountain for the Lewis gun. Yes, it's very good, Sergeant. The closer we dare get, just misses the propeller arm. Yes. Oh, that blessed old Hun thinks he's perfectly safe when we're on his tail. <laughs> well, what a little surprise he was. <laughs> well, it's not so easy for us to aim, of course. But if we line up on the Hun at an angle of 20 degrees, well, we stand some chance of hitting him. What? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Makes sense to me. We English never do anything simply, do we? Well, gentlemen, that's our machinery fit and ready. What about us? Us? That's right, us. Our God-given machinery. Well, Mr. Galeons is well-oiled, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. The general just rang. He sends his congrats and says he's perfectly willing for the new engine to be installed in all forms. Oh, of good. Marvellous. Did you speak to Monsieur Flemmer? <laughs> yes, sir, I did. I informed him that if he continued to make complaints against us, we'd take steps. On the grounds of his undermining uh, l'action au vent de flying. <laughs> That's splendid. Good. What was the outcome? He chased me across the large turnip field with a pitchfork. <laughs> did he catch us? No, sir, he did not. Well, I am a keep fit enthusiast. <laughs> Sergeant Mills, you could be the very chap I'm looking for. Good morning, gentlemen. When I blow this, I want you to start jumping up and down, lightly, on your toes. Like this. One, two, one, two. Are you ready, then? One, two, one, two, one, two. Put some spring into it, Mr. Galian, sir. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Right. Now the winner, one dart each, and the winner introduces our new fighting machine and our forward action policy to the Eindecker Pirates. Oh, me first, me first. Thank you, sir. Oh, would you come? Thank you. Oh, Lord. 
shut to. Good shot. Good shot. You told me another day before. Well, that seems to be it. Patrol the area south of Tom Pleuve just after dawn. Well, why wait till dawn, sir? Why not this evening? It's a bit keen, aren't you? I want to see how she compares with the Eindecker. Well, we can tell you that now. We've improved her speed and her performance, but she's still no match for that monoplane. It's best to wait till dawn. They seem to go home to roost this time of night. That's exactly what I had in mind, sir. I mean, you talk about forward action, bringing the war to the enemy. Brave English flyers, yes? The brave English flyers. And I thought I'd done pretty well. Well, if it hadn't been for this little bit of genius, we'd be using you as a pepper pot right now. Well, let's not be too pessimistic, gentlemen. After all, we knew the odds were heavily against us. At least we've given those Eindecker pilots something to think about. And that's what worries me. It's my turn tomorrow. Well, if I may, I'll give you a tip, Mr. Gurney. Yeah? When he comes up from behind you underneath you, don't go into a steep climb. Why not? Well, I did that today, and you might be ready for it tomorrow. See, well, that's how it's going to be from now on. Studying each other's tactics day by day. Waiting for each other to make a mistake. It'll be a lot of fun, isn't it? Well, I think so. Well, it's all right for you. Don't worry, he'll be getting his share of the fun. Gentlemen, I give you a test. Forward action. Forward, Forward action. action. And Uncle Harry. Who? <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Harry. Harry. Keep the lid and the tin and the cake will stay moist. Right, thank you. Well, it's something anyway, if the food in that lodging isn't up to the mark. Won't be as good as yours, and I'm sure of that. Flattery. <laughs> I'll drop you a line. Yes. Oh, I nearly forgot. This is for you. Yes, this then? I shan't have any need for it. Wages are good at that factory. <laughs> I never thought I should be a war profiteer. Things aren't too right for you, I know that. I can't take this. I've only been paying you half a wage anyway, and now you want to give it all back to me. I want to give it all back to you. That's right. No. I want to. Hello. Just came to wish you luck. Ah. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lorna. Just in time. Yeah. Well, I must be going. It's the omnibus in five minutes. Goodbye, Molly. Oh, don't forget the cake. Oh, no. Yes. Remember me to Alan when you write. Bye, Harry. Take care of yourself. I'm sorry. I was fond of Harry. I was talking to Alan about when you two get married. No, I mean when the war is over, when Alan comes home. 
Well, there is room here, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. You want to make up your own minds. I didn't mean to interfere. No, it's not that. Well, what then? Just wish he was here, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> 